Hello folks and once again I am at the motorist as usual it seems to be a theme on my channel it's a wonderful place to come and I arranged to meet a load of other people hopefully in their focus mark ones uh, we've had a few dropouts but naturally we've had bad weather I've got a cold other people have got a cold so um, it's uh, it's all going round a little bit but hopefully uh, we can get a few people it is raining I'm a bit annoyed about the weather because it's the only time that I've actually driven my uh, focus in uh, this kind of weather but um, anyway we're gonna braise the weather we're here anyway uh, in the focus for the last time uh, this year she's uh, she's made it without uh, skipping a beat where's where, where's my car where's my car it's just here there we go she's just here um, we've made it here um, for the last time this year she will be sawned uh, and off the road from today uh, after this journey because uh, I don't intend to take her out uh, in rather bad weather that we are going to have more or less I mean this is probably as good a day as what I could hope for uh, so yeah anyway today the reason I'm here is not necessarily to get a bunch of Mark 1s together, but also because it's Ford day at the motor. So we're gonna see a lot more Fords in the car park. I will try and pick out some interesting ones. I will try and not make this a long-winded episode because I have had feedback. My episodes are too long. People are having to pause them all the time. Sorry about that, but you know, there's just so many nice cars to get around. Anyway, let's have a look at other people's cars. Got this wonderful line of Mustangs. I think th there, there has been some sort of club meet going on. Um, I was wondering if I'd parked up wrongly, but at least I've got a Mark III to keep me company. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, we've had, um, I've been cleaning it and now it's started spitting again. Uh, I'm quite annoyed about that. I've just been making sure that the seals are nice and clean before we go out again. I will hose it down. Um, there is going to be a video that I'm going to do about laying your um, classic or modern classic up. Um, and it can apply to many cars, but this is the procedure that I would go through uh, when laying this car up. And this car will be laid up after today. Um, that will be on a different day, um, but hopefully I can incorporate it somehow. But uh, she's looking absolutely wonderful over here, and I was hoping to get a spot over here. Hopefully we can have some Mark 1s here, maybe. Uh, the time is 10 o'clock, I start this video. We may be uh, having a, a few visitors the next time we come around. But sh once again, the car just starts on the button, doesn't miss a beat. I haven't driven this car in a couple of weeks since we went to Peterborough at TC Harrison. Um, and the, the, the car, it, it literally, it's just one of the few cars you could just leave probably for months and start it and it would just start up on the button. And the main thing is check your oils, uh, etc. Just ch make a few checks under the bonnet, etc. Uh, make sure you've got enough oil in the engine and then you can start it off. That's absolutely fine. Do your tyre pressures, that sort of thing. Anyway, next car, Mark III Focus. Mm, okay, on a 13 plate with uh, a blacked out badge. That seems to be quite a current theme with blacked out sort of tinted uh, headlights. Um, I believe that's the titanium wheels. Is that, is that right? No, they're not. Uh, I've got that wrong straight away. Um, they're not. Got tinted rear lights. That seems to be a, a thing if you're doing it to the front as well, uh, with a lower spoiler. Um, we are going to see quite a few modified focuses today or modified Fords because that is a current theme with Fords. Uh, people tend to uh, just tweak them a little bit. Uh, some people go a bit more further than others, but you know, each to their own. It's a nice car, that. And I believe this is not Panther Black. Um, there seems to be something going on with that wing. I don't think that's Panther Black. I might be wrong because the thing is with Panther Black, it can age in the sun quite quickly, um, but there is a massive contrast between that and that i think that's just generic black somebody can correct me for that ball 13 plate focus mm. then we got a mustang on a 15 plate next door uh with these lovely bonnet stripes we're going to hear quite a bit of this there's two more that have come in maybe we are in the wrong spot <laughs> most of them are five liter v8s most of them um you can get them with the two point well, these certainly are. You can get them with the 2.3 EcoBoost, but uh, honestly, you don't really want that, do you? Um, it just doesn't go well for the GT version. The all GT, GT versions down here. I don't know what half of these colors are. 
but they are striking. I think the Mustang is the only Ford that I would want to buy after the Focus has done its death. Yeah, I think after the Focus finishes production next year, I think the Mustang is the only Ford that I'd want to own that they currently produce. Uh, although it's, you know, it's out of my budget and many other people's budget, you know. It's, you know, it's life, but I'd... It's, it, very, hypothetically, it, it is one I've had. This is a rather fetching colour, this is. It's sort of like... Sort of Cameroon dark forest green. I can't remember what the colour is. And this one's got particularly different wheels, but it, I think they are genuine wheels. They're just, uh, hmm, slightly different. And this yellow is more of a sort of wasp yellow, more than a banana yellow, uh, particularly with the black. I suppose that black and yellow go together, don't they? Uh, that's, that's always the main thing with these. Lovely. Uh, we won't talk about these because these are not part of this show. Uh, I'll just come round here. And uh, yeah, we have, uh, we have a few more that have lined up. Again, this yellow, black, wasp sort of look, contrast look, love it. And then you've got the orange and black contrast again. Uh, and then this one, ooh, the angry banana. Okay, nice. And uh, the rocker covers a very, very appropriate. Although, should it be American? I don't know, because this is a sort of Americanized British car now. I don't know. Some people say a Mustang should never be right hand drive, but you know, it's, it's each to their own. Lovely example. Well, since it's Ford Day, we have to acknowledge a Mark 7 Fiesta. I think these are going to be quite rare in 10 years' time. I really do. I think they're going to be quite rare. Most that I see are battered beyond all belief. Um, we won't. Oh, I know it's a Ford Day, but uh, this is quite interesting. Okay. Uh, I've not seen one of these in quite a while. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a massive person with Corollas and Toyota Carinas, Corollas of this age, but uh, I, I can't remember the last time I saw one on H-Reg. I won't talk about Golfs on an M-Reg because I don't rate these as very... I don't rate them. Uh, not the Mark III anyway. Uh, we've got a lovely Morgan that's just parked up. Mm. One of the more modern ones, you can tell with the, just the way the arches are grooved. Uh, right, so we've got some Focus... ST, so we got a Mark 3.5. Obviously, the they managed to with the 3.5, they sort of cut off half the rear light to sort of make it a bit more shallow and a bit more streamlined to go with the window, I think, because the windows are quite streamlined and then they sort of made the, the lights less bulbous at the back. I, I think that was a good styling cue and the infotainment system is far better, less buttons. They got it right with a 3.5 and I would definitely recommend a Mark 3.5 for those particular reasons because the Mark 3 was a bit faffy for the, for the, uh, the buttons on the radio. Again, this, this looks like some ridiculous print but it, it goes really really nicely and if you're going to put a box and uh, if you're going to have a cone air filter you've got to have a box around it otherwise it, it's just there's just no point oh god get into that starter motor is a bit fun actually is that a starter motor it is a starter motor bloody hell i would not like to change any part of that whatsoever and that's a 1.5 eco boost i'm assuming mm. Mm mm-hmm and these damn clips always break. They, they're really bad for that. We've got an R oh, we've got an RS right next to it with this. <laughs> I'm going to see some really nice things. I mean, to be fair, I am into Batman. I'm a bit more sort of DC than Marvel. That's me. And my God, we've got a Mark 6 Fiesta ST with some uh, very... Uh, <laughs> it's got LEDs behind the, behind the grill. <laughs> Ah, uh, dear me. Love it. Got a lovely flag here. Oh, yes. And my God, that interior. Yes, please. Thank you. Oh, my goodness me. That interior is to die for. Red leather. Oh, I can see that, actually. The Ford Racing emblem on the seats as well. Oh, yes. And you've got colour coordination going on in the centre console and the steering wheel and the centre console yes that's brilliant and even on the that door cards with these leather i think leather insert they are leather inserts yeah. like a perforated leather yeah. yeah i love that 
That's cracking. Oh, okay. Mark five. Mark uh, four. Monday. Oh. Ah, a black edition. I didn't know about this. So presumably this is not this is not Panther black. It's the same black as the Mark III Focus. Yeah, the the Mark IV is a, a tried and tested. Probably the last, I would say, great Mondeo, the Mark IV. I think the Mark V was a little bit more overcomplicated, and the reliability probably suffered a little bit as a result. I think the Mark IV is the pinnacle of what you can get in a Mondo for the reliability, the performance, and the cost, and the just just the overall ownership experience. And I think we have the Midlands Ford Club that are here today. Lovely. Oh, dear me, Mini. Mini, mini, mini. I have got to go over here um, because we've got a lovely, a lovely Escort here. So 16 valves. So this would be probably a 1.6 ZTEC on an N Reg, wearing its um, original registration plate uh, from Coe, uh, Ford Wigan. Just have to take a look underneath. Yes, it's very, very uh, rust free. But a bit of lack of on the bit of patina, but. The arches look quite decent actually. They look really good. Okay, got a, a nice sunroof with a, a wind deflector on that. It's probably quite handy to have a wind deflector there. And the, the later dashboard with the smaller door mirrors as you get. It's an LX. So we're talking about middle of the range here. So we've got steel wheels and then hubcaps to go with it. Um, yeah. I, I've got to say, I think a Mark V or Mark VI Escort is definitely on the cards. Oh, he's left the window open, so I'll just uh, stick it. Excuse me. Now, I have to have a smell, and it's, yeah, the 90s. In fact, I would say these later Escorts don't smell that different to Mark I Focuses. Mark I Focuses all smell the same, and these are very, very similar. I think the foam material is very, very much the same. Um, and I think a lot of the interior materials found their way onto early Mark 1s. That is a pain in the ass when they start doing that. The arches are really good on this and the sills probably look the same. I, I really like seeing just unmolested examples like this. Uh, full, full play to the owner uh, and I'm going to leave a card in a little bit. Um, right next door we have oh an XR3 I by the, the look of it. Yes, a genuine XR3 I and a H plate. Uh, from the XR Owners Club, and we've seen quite a few of these on this channel so far, with a sunroof, body kit, well, as well as from the factory, with fog lamps as you would normally get them. Lovely. Oh, we have an XR2. No, this is an XR2. Uh, I think it is. We won't know until we find the back because they did introduce it. Yes, it's an XR2 on an F plate. So that would be quite a late 1989 one. Again, registered at Gordon Ford Wigham, the better name in Ford. Oh, I love that. And it's matched by the registration plate, completely original. Lovely. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We've got another X scores XR3i. I... Next door, I saw this coming in. We've got a Puma sitting right here on a W reg with bonnet catches and some bumper cracks that sort of thing some sort of patina but it's as you might have guessed um it is actually a millennium i'm sure it is a, it's a ford racing puma no it's, it's a ford racing puma i thought it was a millennium uh i thought it was a millennium puma because they came out with a millennium focus it's got the same actually very similar color but it's actually not the same i thought it was for a second then i had to look twice ah nice so it has been uh, tweaked a little bit love it to see a puma and uh, they're quite coveted now i think next door we have a mark three a mark three fiesta on a h reg but uh, i think this is an xr2i uh, unless it's been dumbed up no it's an rs turbo sorry about that i got that wrong it's an rs turbo I don't know how I got that wrong. Maybe it was because it was slightly different at the front. Uh, that might be me, still learning a few things. Yeah, Those Recaro seats, those Wimbat seats look so, oh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the headlights are what confused me there. I can't tell what it was. Well, to be fair, the bottom fog lamp should kind of give it away, but still. Oh, that lovely oil cooler's uh, sticking out quite a long way. I assume it's an oil cooler. Then we got this 
Uh, Focus in Ultimate Green RS. Obviously, they only made them in a few colours. Very nice indeed. We got another Ford Puma here on an S Reg. Uh, registered a TC Harrison Ford. Oh yes. This is um a solid body colour, I believe. We might do. I see it might be a metallic. It's very shy, whatever it is, and it's very, very solid underneath. That must be one of the earliest Pumas that I've seen so far, because most of my C are on WX registrations. Then we've got another WH X. Oh, ooh, Mark One. So this on a W reg. Fiesta 1.3. Ah, that I love the interior of that. That's really nice. I've come round here, and guess who's turned up with his 400 pound diesel? Nick, how are you, buddy? I'm fine. I'm glad you could come and join us. I've done a few. Yeah, I've noticed you've done some interesting work to stop water getting in on this fine day. Yeah, that's a very effective method. Yeah, I have still got the old filter before I change that. Ah, okay. And you should see. Should Is it disgust? Is it just like squidgy and go on? Do you want to see it? Yes, please. Oh dear. He's also changed the fuel filter just there. Really good, and they're very easy on these TDCIs. Very easy indeed. Were they? Ah. Here we go. Oh, Jesus. So that's, that's the, that's that's the, the clean way. side. That's the dirty side. And I changed that. This is why you I must just... change them. You must change them. That's... And the one what's in it is the same. Oh, no. So I've got to buy another one. Because <sighs> water's got in again. It's the rainwater only thing it is the biggest design flaw in a focus mark one um i am going to do a video a proper video of changing it but i think the best way of going about it is to actually remove the bonnet uh, i'm not joking you doing this job with the bonnet is actually a bit of a faff if i'm doing it with my own car to avoid scratching my lovely paint i would probably take the bonnet off so th this is going to be done properly what is this yeah, that's a Chevrolet. I've seen quite a few of them down by me. It's starting to build up really nicely down here. Oh my God. That is your pedal rubber. That's the clutch. Oh, the clutch rudder. The clutch? That's the clutch. Oh my God. That was insane. sick. Well, so As I can, can see. I can assume they are sort of left footed. Oh, I don't know which way that goes. It goes this that way. way so they are, their toe is on the left hand side, well, the right hand side of the brake pedal. And then the clutch is, oh my God, that's worn. This is something that you really must look at, guys. That's why actually on MOTs, they're tested. <laughs> the pedal rubbers are looked at. So, uh, my God. One what about? Yeah. That's actually bigger than them. Just fractionally. Just, just, in, ju it does fit the pedal nicely, doesn't it? Yeah, well, I think they're me meant to be for a transit van, but it's on the pedal. Yeah, I, I would imagine they're all the same sizes because they wanted to standardise things for Focus, Fiesta, Transit. They'd all be almost exactly the same. Then. That's what Ford are like with these, these things. Really lovely to see. Right, let's get on. Just before we go, um, Nick has actually ordered a new steering rack. And this is actually a reconditioned one. It's actually a Ford uh, steering rack. I'll bring it out here a little bit. Now, at the bottom side, this end cap, it has, uh, sometimes these can leak. There is a video that Alan Howitt has done on his channel, Focus Gear, which is leaking repulsively from the steering rack. And it's actually coming from this point. It's actually not the pipes. These are the two pipes that come with, obviously go to the middle point of the rack and then the end point. And the two pipes on the car come in here. They can get a bit stiff sometimes, but it's nice to see they've, they've put a bit of grease on. Now, your inner track rod, right? That is your inner track rod with the boot. That is your original knuckle okay now the original knuckles are smoothed so you need a special tool 
to actually clamp on this you basically it's a tool with like a little notch at the end and you put a spanner to turn it because in the car this is screwed into the end but there's no physical room to get um, a wrench because of the distance between this and the subframe to actually release the inner joint so if you are having to replace the inner joint the only reason the inner joints need replacing is because the actual ball joint is moving basically in and out and that's the problem um, yes that is the <laughs> There is a gift on this side. Uh, and that is um, what causes excessive movement in the shaft. I think I might have the same issue because I've got the originals on mine. But most Mark 1s will have this issue if they've not already had it. Steer racks tend to go, but the reconditioned ones are absolutely fine. And um, you've got to make sure that your, I think it, there's a steering coupler that goes to this. It's one job I haven't done so far, but uh, I thought I'd show you that. Oh, God. A Mark II ST. Oh, we've got an RS in frozen white. 3.5 ST. We've got a, a Mark uh, 8 Fiesta in uh, green with uh, sort of colour coordinated badges. We've got a lot of noise going in and out, guys, so apologies. We've got a Mark 6 Fiesta. That's actually quite nice to see. There's been two I've seen today um, illustrating some sort of. Ah, CM Illustrations. Ah, so he does a bit of artwork as well. Another Mark 8 Fiesta. We have an, S an ST220. I'm trying to get around because we've got a GT40 that's just passed. Yep, the Duratec 3 litre V6. What an absolute wicked engine this is. They got this engine down to a T. Look, you've got your acoustics. Someone was having a joke. Brilliant, utterly brilliant. These are actually common uh, modification on Mark 1 focuses, the crystal white side lenses. They're exactly the same fitment. It's uh, an ideal uh, place to start. Got some nice wind deflectors. I did have some on mine, but they kind of, um, they cracked ages ago. And we know about this Fiesta XR2i guy. He is here. I haven't bumped into him yet, so anyway, Hello, if you, is this your car? I'm, uh, I am in, uh, I'm in the, I am in the vicinity. Uh, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I've sat in this car. It's a wonderful car. Hoping to uh, catch him. He might not know which car I've bought today. Uh, we've still got some coming in. We've got a, a larger array in front of the motorist here. We've got a Ford Escort with all the braces, Sibbies with this beautiful orange in it. Uh, it's a 1600 GT and it's a sta is it estate version? I didn't realise they made these in the estate form. Somebody could fill me in there. Oh, lovely tailpipe. And the mud flaps are always delightful. Tell you what, having these refurbed is difficult because essentially you've got to paint two parts. You've got to paint this bit and then paint the inserts. Crack him beautiful car uh, we'll, we'll skip over the Astra Ooh, another uh, RS in uh, beautiful I believe diamond white as usual Escort Turbo RS with the big fat exhaust yeah that exhaust looks quite brutal underneath there uh, next to a uh, Quite an American Ford. Mm. We've got a Mustang wearing a lot of patina there. We've got a cross flowing a Cortina. Wow, 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 wow. Look how you've got this knuckle design for the downpipe going on the manifold. And a big, massive alternate actually it would be a dynamo yeah it would be a dynamo i suspect on this potentially got a tiny lucas battery 36 amp hours just nothing there, there is just a, a couple of wires and we have a glass bowl fuel pump yes i know these quite well you got a little filter on the top there and you can see the fuel coming through i love these little things 
Ah, and then you have your starter solenoid on the side. The days were starter motors and solenoids did not come together they were kind of separate items so the starter motor being an inertia starter motor down there so uh, inertia meaning it only operates when the key is actually turned to uh, start it, uh, it doesn't work on the ignition and we have a solenoid that works in tandem with it beautiful i'm hearing all sorts of noises and i'm seeing all sorts of beautiful leather look at the steering wheel look at the dainty steering wheel just put a couple of fingers on there and that's all that's required a lovely cream roof this is absolutely i think it's the car of the day so far i just love the white and the blue absolutely gorgeous oh. and it was quite powerful under the bonnet We've got loads of things moving off and reversing back in. Must be careful not to get my feet run over. A D Reg Capri. I love the big door mirrors you get on these Recaros in here and all the plastics that you expect. I like the steering wheels on these. I think the three spoke steering wheel suits the later Capris. Um, Got a nice tape deck in there as well. Beautiful. An Escort 1600i with all the paraphernalia on the back shelf. Oh, that is beautiful. 118 scale as well. Oh, yes. I love that display. And the paintwork, the black paintwork is just ridiculous and we have a cvh engine what i love is that on these rocker covers on the rs versions you have motorsport imprinted oh i love that oh it makes me think of ruby and uh, as we were rebuilding ruby just a little bit yeah good battery i approve of those batteries wow okay not every time you see one on stands Brace the Sibbies. Mm. Looks uh, Z Tech like. Very, very Z Tech like. Oh God, you've got all your reservoirs over there. Let's have a look at the name. Oh, that is just so tidy. Oh gosh, that's that's the sort of perfection that I strive for on my channel. Um, if you're not very familiar with the way I work and how thoroughly uh, I like my cars, um, that's quite yeah. Obviously, the, that's your a way of jacking these cars up. They go into the sill. Uh, quite a common way of jacking cars up. That's absolutely gorgeous. It does indeed. I love this sort of information. So gross weight, about 550. Mm, it might be 690 actually. I can't remember which one. The gross weight was 1200, but that that that, that might not be. Uh, might be before they added a few bits to it. Yeah. A few little details there. You may want to pause this to read this. Yeah, it's had a load of bits and pieces done. Limited slip diff, quaff gearbox, sequential twin paddle clutch, Pinto flywheel. Yeah, it's had quite a few done. Ah, the Z-Tech, it's a black top crate engine. Uh, the black top is more preferred to the silver top. Uh, Mark 1 and 2 Mondeo people will know more about that than anybody else. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty substantial. Wow. 
this beautiful Escort Mexico, a genuine reproduction of a 1971 rally car. This was while the first produced in 1970, November 1970. Beautiful car, completely restored to how it was presented in the 1971 season. Just been speaking with a lovely owner. Beautiful car. This one has been similarly rebuilt to its 1971 rally spec with every single decal, because all these are from pictures from when it actually used to go rallying. Beautiful. And we have that which is just parked up and this man who's constantly following me like a stalker. I'm only joking. Just been admiring these wonderful cars. Okay, okay. That's um, quite juicy. Cosworth as well. Yep, that's, um, that's quite... Actually, there is one thing that I've noticed. There was a Mark III Fiesta up for braking not far from me with that battery cover i'm going to see if the battery cover's still there that is an absolute wicked feature i'm going to try and get one for ruby hopefully win. hopefully win-win situation yeah, it is a win-win definitely ah, i love this whale tail i have to say it's quite sharp it's quite sharp that but the whale tail beautiful to see an rs cosworth lovely lovely i actually prefer the early mark 5 escorts i prefer these back lights i don't know why but Maybe some people think they're a bit plain and boring. I think they were quite nice. Next to a Ford, oh my God, a Ford Anglia Deluxe. A Deluxe, oh, nice. Super Speed Conversions Limited. Does that mean it's had some sort of, well, I think it definitely has been by the look of it. It's had some sort of, well, it's a Kent, that is a Kent Crossflow engine. So it is pretty original underneath. And we've, we've got a breather going into, oh yes, that's a very original breather can. Nick, have you seen this? Look at this. That is your breather going into nice. an oil can, yeah? That's your breather from the top going into an oil can. Brilliant. And that is what you call an oil catch can. Wow. Brilliant. And then basically you'll tip that back into the engine, assumingly. Brilliant. <laughs> oh, I love that front. Next to a Focus. Not like the look at this, though. Which one? This. No, 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 no. The back. The back? Yeah. It's got fire extinguisher. Does that mean problems? No, it just means very cautious because of E10. No, E5. Even E5 contains uh, some small amounts of ethanol. You can't get away with it. And on cars like this, I would... I have a fire extinguisher. I've got a small fire extinguisher in the back of both my yes. cars. So I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have it any other yes. way. This is really nice. With all the period correct stickers on this Mexico, K and N. Ah, oh, excuse me. Ah, uh, that's been tweaked over the years. Okay, so we've got some twin electric fuel pumps going on there, facet pumps. Hmm, that's an interesting. Hmm, that's an interesting fuel tank. Put your fuel in there. Got a bit of a breather going on there. Oh, I, I love that sticker. Ford David Sutton Cars Limited, Rally Sports Centre, London. I mean, I've seen a lot. I've seen more of these than standard. Uh, my God, you seen this 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 twin belt system down here? Twin fan belts. The days before multi-ribbed belts. See, we've got, we've got two over there and we've got another one over here, presumably for... Oh, God. It's interesting. I mean, very interesting arrangement. I've not actually noticed that on these. It's a bit different to the multi-ribbed uh, style belts they have these days. I mean, this colour just stands out. The purpolescent nature of this colour. It is more purple than blue. It's sublime. It's such a good colour. Why Ford ditched a colour like this? Because it doesn't. It stands in your face, but it isn't too stand in your face, if you know what I mean. It's quite a subtle hint of performance and racing pedigree. Ooh, we've got a Mark II. Very nice, the honeycomb grill. Mark 8, Ford Performance, quite a nice fetching white colour, Mark 7 and a half, 
with the obviously the fish I call it the fish look, but the, you've got the honeycomb thing instead of the, the chrome sort of Aston Martin grill, but I call it the fish look. They do look like fishes, don't they? Uh, and then you've got another RS over here. Right, ST. A Mark III with, uh, and again, sort of red, red uh, badging going on. Well, it's always a contrast. There's so many different colours you can get for them. Another ST here. I, I do like this colour, actually. I actually like this colour on a uh, Focus 3.5, Mark 3.5. Oh my goodness me, we have a lovely Mondeo Mark 1 on an Enreg. Oh yes, it's been a while since I've seen one of these. Those seats are really comfortable, look at those seats. They look so comfortable. They look almost like Rover-like with the seats. Door handles are quite interesting as well. Cassette. I actually like the door handles. They're quite, um, they're quite flush. What was that? The, has it got a cassette? Yeah. Oh yes. Oh, I hope that, I hope that works. I mean, even the scuttle looks a bit more higher quality, a bit more free flowing. And here we have a silver top. Ah, I haven't seen one of these in a while. A silver top Z10, and the silver top was the original version. The black top tends to be a bit more stronger. It's the later version. They tweaked it around 96, 97, I believe. Um, the Ford Focus um, only got the black top version of the 1.8 2 liter Z Tech, but uh, the Mondeo's got the silver top. Um, originally, it was called the Zeta, but because of copyright issues uh, with the Italians, they had to change it to Z Tech. But uh, Nice to see that the cam belt's been done on time as per the markings. Looks really dry under here. I love the heat shield as well, the style of the heat shield on these. And look at the look at the oil dipstick. I quite like that as well where it shoots out. It's quite nice actually. That's, that's nice quality slimline touch. I do like the earlier cam covers. When they're nicely painted up and they're looking nice, but this is very honest. Uh, we've got the early style, early style HT leads with the clips. Um, Mark 1 focuses didn't get them, that was a, an early thing. I can't quite find the name of the battery. It's down there. You can't find the name of the battery. It's I, down here. It's a type. Oh, is it down there? It's a, it. No, it's a, it's, a, it's a cheap aftermarket battery, but they're okay. Look at this engine mounting. You've got two bolts here, a bolt there, and another bolt there, just to, to steady the engine so it stops it from rocking. We've got some sort of hydro mount as you would usually find with a massive expansion tank. And ridiculously, we've got a visitor here. Yep. Look at this. Well, 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 Jason has a new car. Instead of a Focus, he's bought a Puma. That is one straight Puma. In the Mark 1 community, we like to mess about with other cars and this is a car he has wanted for a very, very long time. And uh, I've been looking for him and uh, I was looking to find one. And uh, wow. What an absolute stonking car. Hello, Jason. Oh my goodness, mate, what a stonking car. We need to see this on your YouTube channel. If no one knows Jason's channel, it's called Keep Focused, okay? Keep Focused is the channel. We need to see this car on there. What an absolute stonker. That's nothing. <laughs> That's an absolute piece. You've got a bit, a bit you know, mine indentations. That's not important. What's important is what is underneath. <sighs> nothing. Absolutely nothing. That is your wheel arch on a Puma. <laughs> that is utterly astonishing. Love it. Absolutely love it. And this one is even more rare. I was just going to come to this before we, we saw Jason with the Puma. No bumper cracks. The bumpers on these are not made from ABS. They're made from an inferior white plastic. I'm not a massive fan of Mark 1 Mondeos. I don't necessarily think they look 
amazing. I think Mark II Mondeo's Neva, I prefer the Mark I. But I do think that they were quite, as a, as a futurist design, very, very modern and upmarket, especially for Ford. I think it was definitely improvement over, let's say, the Ford Granada that it replaced. Um, but the bumpers, wow. It's nice to see one that isn't cracked. Anyway, next one. Now we have a look we had a look at this escort earlier but the bonnet's open yeah that is a very very nice silver top 1.6 ztec engine right let's go down and have a look Ooh. very very nice here we've got a few down here Ooh. very nice orange color it strikes quite instantly this is a wicked car that is an amazing colour. Blue and slight tinge of, now I don't know if I'm colour blind, it looks slightly purple to me. No, maybe I am colour blind. Escort RS Cosworth. Chaboco. Mm. Right, we've got the car park walk. Now I've been told there's a couple of interesting cars down here. Uh, I'll try and stick to Fords because that's what I'm here for. Oh yes, we have an RS over here. We've got another Mark 6 Fiesta. I like to see it of the facelifted version. I like to see Mark 6s. Very nice. Oh, another RS here. And we'll have a sort of gunmetal grey sort of colour. I don't know the, the proper name. Oh, let's have a look. Oh my goodness me. We have got a few cars that have come. Ah, okay. This car... I think is owned by someone in the preservation group. Very, very interesting. I'm not sure if these are Spark Co wheels. Um, I approve of that. And I have, I approve of these. These are the non LED US spec rear lights. And I had the LED versions fitted to mine. And I do like them. I think they're. They're quite, I don't think they look American. I think they look quite European rather than UK spec. Um, I don't know. Uh, yes, rusty. Well, I have to say it looks pretty solid, actually. And the, the, uh, the carpet liners look really good, actually. So we've got um, sort of an ST170 interior in this. It's, it's had a few things done to it. And those are the ST170 front lights there slightly tinted from the factory and this car is wearing a collection front bumper with a uh, slightly tinted indicators uh you've got the uh unique indicators to the collection down there very nice to see i'm glad he's made it today um if i keep walking down here we've got uh, a mondeo Actually, I'm pretty certain that, that is an ST170. I might be wrong about that one. It's, it's been changed a little bit to the point where I can't tell. Uh, it's not immediately obvious. I'll try and guess that in a second. Uh, the Mark III Mondeo in, I think, titanium. Well, it's not titanium because it's got Recaro. It's the ST220. Um, I was about to say the titanium front because the grille is uh, slightly different on them. I mean, the headrests are really nice, actually. The headrests make me think of my Rover 45. Very contemporary and uh, a very nice grown-up sort of dashboard. Um, interesting. The hub caps sit really... The centre caps sit really nicely on these. Pity the ST170 hub caps are not like that. Right, there isn't a great deal more. That is the best colour for Mark 7 Fiesta. End of story. Now, I have to point out this car here. It's not a Ford. It's not a car that I like. And if the owner's watching this, please don't feel offended. But that is, what on earth? Can they not make a kidney grill as big as that? I mean, it's like they had a competition. Could we make it as flat fronted and huge as possible? It's actually fake. It actually, it's actually like sort of some plastic um, fake sort of style plating behind it. It's just, ugh. Seven Fiesta. 
some of these are just people who are visiting because they they want to come and see a load of Fords. This is the best colourful Mark 7 Fiesta. End of story. Lovely Mazda. Uh, got a few STs here. Um, now, the thing is, there's a few there's a few of these that are ST lines. So, not quite an ST. The problem with ST line is it just smacks of, I couldn't afford a proper ST, so I bought the ST line. That's what that kind of tells me. Um, so, it's kind of like, uh, yeah... Uh, there's a few specs back in the day. That's the estate version. I love this. Yes, you don't see many of them as the uh, the estate version. I love the estate focus. Uh, I think that the Mark 1s are not quite so nice. I think the Mark 2, Mark 3, it, it sort of grew uh, a little bit. And uh, I, I quite like the, re the rear lights. are a nice style, actually. Um, and do you know what? I fully approve of this colour. Uh, just end of, really. Another, another ST here. I think we have covered all we have had to cover, but I am pretty certain that uh, yeah, we've seen what we've had to see. Brilliant. What another lovely day at the motorist. Um, I have been getting distracted talking to various people. Another, another beautiful apple green Mark 7 there. I have been busy talking to a, a load of people today and I've become quite distracted. Um, so. Do forgive me if this video turns into a, another long-winded one. But uh, this is kind of the final show that I'll be going to Ford Base for quite a while. I will be coming here in December, but it will mainly be a, a Focus Mark 1 Preservation Group style sort of meeting. Uh, not really me filming. Um, I have to say, a Golf GL, I did notice that. It's been modified a little bit. Uh, Mark 8 Fiesta. Uh, this has been golded and winged and all sorts another one there nice another mark 8 mark 8 and this weirdo following me again sick and hear the footsteps oh we've got a tdci oh we've got an S st tdci it's an interesting gear lever now, I was just saying about how the hubcaps fit so nicely to these, but the ST170 hubcaps always have to, like, uh, just look, you know, they stick out like a sore thumb. Right, so I'm going to leave this here, and uh, I'm going to bid you a farewell by just showing you into this lovely Mustang here. I was going to end the video here, but once again, Nick's car has a new problem. <laughs> Can't get into his own. Right, you've got in. Right. How did you do that? You're getting know, stuck pulled, again. I just pulled right. it. You might have a bit of a handle issue here. It says, yeah. What's happened here is the rod isn't adjusted properly. So if I just, there is a technique. I've been doing this the last few minutes. There we go. Firm pressure on the lock. There we go. Push it in. You, you kind of push in with your thumb and then just, it has to be, you can't do it slowly. You have to do it pushing with thumb. Oh, there we go, see? It just needs a bit of adjustment. Uh, I think that's why it's done. It's there. Go on. Push. Oh, gosh. <laughs> hey, there we go. Right, come on, Nick. You haven't done it so far. Have you done it? Yeah, you did it once. You see? Once you get a grip of how you do it, but what it is, it's the adjustment. There's like um, a rod that goes from the handle down to the, the lock actuator, and there's a nut that probably needs a bit of adjustment. Although I would say it will probably need the door card off and a bit of a yeah, bit, bit of a clean up. GT85 is my word. And at last, I can now finish this video. It's been a wonderful show. We've heard some noises, seen some very nice cars, some very nice Fords of various different ages. Um, we've seen a couple of members of the Ford Focus Mark 1 Preservation Group. Um, I'm hoping next year there will be more members going to national meets, which I'm organising uh, this very second. And I have confirmed two dates at the Great British Car Journey and Gaydon. Uh, I'll be announcing dates on my YouTube channel, on the Facebook page, etc. But for me and Fifty Shades of Pamper Black, it is good day, goodbye, and this car will be the subject of a how to lay your car up for the winter video. I think that's quite a good one. Take care, guys.
silver top. Black top. <laughs> 